In my sophomore year of high school, I had an experience that changed my life. I went to Regis High School, an all-male Catholic school in New York City. When I think of Regis, I usually think of the classes that I took that inspired me to learn for the first time in my life, or I think of the friendships I made or the teachers that I had. But Regis was also responsible for some incredible spiritual experiences. For example, a few times a year, our entire community, students, teachers, and staff, and faculty, would celebrate Mass together. We'd gather across the street in the church of St. Ignatius Loyola. It was this beautiful church, big church. I would sit among my classmates, my friends. Until Regis, I never really enjoyed going to church. It was that thing that we did. You got it over with, and then you had brunch with your family. But I loved going to Mass in high school. Sharing in this ritual with people that I knew well and cared about, it felt like my faith came alive. As students at Regis, we also went on retreats. There was a retreat freshman year and a retreat for upperclassmen. But the big one was Quest, which was the retreat in sophomore year. When we were freshmen, Quest was legendary. Older students said it was one of the highlights of their time at Regis. Friends of ours would come back talking about this incredible experience they'd had that they couldn't really tell us about because it was kind of supposed to be secret, but it was this incredible experience, and man, you couldn't wait to go on and find out for yourself. Even the name added to the mystique, Quest. In January of my sophomore year, it was time for my class to go on Quest. Along with our student and faculty leaders, we spent three days at a retreat center in Staten Island. We spent the first two days having discussions and getting to know each other better. We talked about the ways our faith impacted our lives. We talked about the relationships that mattered most to us. We forged new friendships through our conversations and new rivalries through games of touch football. I remember feeling like it was all building towards something. On the last night of the retreat, we ate dinner together and had a group discussion. Then our leaders asked us to return to our rooms for some reflection time while they set up the next activity. We all went back upstairs. When I walked into my room, I noticed a packet on my desk. It had my name on it, and it looked like it was stuffed full with something. I opened it up, and I saw that it was full of folded pieces of paper. I pulled one out to read. It was a letter from a friend of mine at school someone that I really looked up to. This was a friend from the speech and debate team. And he took two pages to describe how much our friendship meant to him, how much he enjoyed having conversations with me in the hallway, how much it meant to him that I always took the time to say hello, to thank him for his help in the team. I put the first letter down. I didn't expect to get anything like that, and it felt really good. I pulled out another letter, this one from one of my best friends at school. And then there were more letters, and more letters. Letters from my family, and my teachers, and my friends, all of them thanking me for the ways I made a difference in their lives. Things that I'd never noticed about myself, things that I didn't know I did, they noticed and they thanked me for. I, I sat in my room for half an hour, maybe more, just reading through these letters, I was blown away not only by the immense love and gratitude I received, but by the awareness that every single day I touched so many people. You know, we all came back downstairs after we got our letters, and the next activity, we were asked how we saw God at work in our lives. And the atmosphere in that room was electrifying. I guess we all must have felt full of the love that we had received, but also felt connected to people in new ways. And we talked about the relationships that mattered most to us. From this experience, I realized something. Every single day, each and every one of us makes a difference to the people around us. We make a difference when we stop on the way to class to say hi to a friend. We make a difference when we ask how someone is feeling. We make a difference when we tell a story or crack a joke. In countless small ways, we enliven the people around us. We have so much power. 
We can change someone's mood, make someone's week, just by sharing our time, our humor, our passions, our concerns. Now, imagine if we set out every day to make a difference. Knowing this power that we have, imagine how much we could achieve if we look for opportunities to talk to other people, to learn from other people, to share ourselves with other people. How much could we give to other people? What kind of rewards could we reap? I want to tell you now about another time in my life, the fall of my junior year at Williams. It was one of the busiest moments ever. I was taking classes and subjects I'd never taken before, classes that I struggled with. I was singing with my a cappella group and holding down a campus job. I was about to go abroad for a semester and I needed to get all of my documents in order. And I was looking ahead to the next summer and the year after and trying to figure out what I would be doing after college, where I should work, what internship I should get. It was exciting, but it was also exhausting. I felt like I was going in five different directions at once. I distinctly remember a moment that fall, it was about October or November. The last few weeks had been full of midterms and deadlines. I realized that I was spending almost all of my waking moments thinking about the documents I had to fill out and the papers I had to write and the rehearsals I had to go to. I was surrounded by friends and mentors, people who cared about me. And yet, for much of the day, I felt isolated. I was stuck in my own head and I needed to get out of it. And though I wouldn't have expected it at the time, faith helped me find a way out. For much of the past four years, I've set my spiritual life aside. Until I came to Williams, I was almost always surrounded by people who shared my Catholic faith, whether it was my families or my classmates at Regis. And aside from those moments at church or on a retreat, our faith remained in the background. It was a shared identity, a common heritage, an invisible thread that bound us together. I came to Williams and found myself surrounded by people who have been going to church all their lives, people who had never gone to church, all sorts of people. And as I started talking to people and meeting people, I realized that I didn't know where I stood in my own faith. I realized that I'd never really thought much about God. I never really thought much about church doctrine or about its social teachings. On top of that, I wasn't sure what role, if any, the Catholic faith was going to play in my life going forward. Faced with this uncertainty, I withdrew a part of myself. I felt that my faith was something that I needed to define for my own, figure out on my own. And I began to see my spiritual life as a project, like any other assignment at school, something that I told myself I would work on whenever I had time. And in doing so, I lost something. I forgot those masses at Regis that I always loved. I forgot how faith can be nourished by a community. This past January, I took a class with the four chaplains at Williams. There were nine students in the class. Once again, I found myself surrounded by people with different backgrounds and perspectives. Guided by the chaplains, we learned about a variety of religious traditions. We read sacred texts. We went to services. We ate meals together and we volunteered. We compared our own experiences. We all had questions and we all learned from each other. From this class, I learned something essential about faith and spirituality. In its own way, every tradition leads us towards other people. We see this in the Gospels when Jesus says, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. We see this in the Buddhist concept of a bodhisattva, a person who is committed to altruism. Every religion emphasizes charity. Having said that, I think faith asks us to do something that is simpler and yet far more profound than just giving alms. It asks us to be aware of, to recognize other people. Furthermore, faith doesn't speak to us only when we are meditating or reading a sacred text or giving praise in a service. Faith calls on us in our day-to-day -day lives, asking us to focus on other people. 
One of my favorite stories in this class comes courtesy of Cantor Bob Sher. In order to prepare for Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, a rabbi goes into the woods, not only to pray, but to chop wood for a homeless woman. In other words, if you want to be holy, get out there and do something. Through this class, I began to see faith as something that connects us to other people. I remember the letters I received during Quest, the importance of stopping to notice someone, to have a conversation. I realized that by focusing on other people, I could find a way out of my isolation. Many of us in this room spend much of our waking hours focusing on other people. We coach, we teach, we take care of our families, we are there for our friends when they're going through hard times. Many of us in this room are volunteers, spending hours doing things for other people. And we know how rewarding it can be to give ourselves to others in these ways, and that's why we stick with it. But as generous as we can be, we can get sidetracked by our everyday concerns. There are always things tugging at our attention. The papers we have to write, the exams we have to study for, the jobs we have to apply to, the bills we have to pay. We can forget that it is our connections with other people that make our lives whole. And we can forget that there are opportunities for connection in even the most mundane moments. So how do we reconnect? Through generosity. Now bear with me for a moment. Generosity doesn't require large amounts of time or energy. Generosity can be as simple as saying hi to someone on the street, recognizing that that person is there. The letters that I received on Quest taught me that there is potential for generosity in almost every moment of our lives. What I propose is that we find ways and moments in our everyday lives to focus on other people. Ask the person who swipes your card at the dining hall how his day is going, and listen to the answer. Just really take that in. Make time for a conversation with your sweet mate when you pass her in the hallway on the way to the bathroom. Maybe not on the way to the bathroom because that's a sensitive time, but you know, other times. <laughs> Whenever you feel yourself becoming stuck in your own bubble, Find a way to get out. Call your dad. Knock on a friend's door. Turn to the person behind you in the grocery store and ask, how about those grapes? How about these apples? <laughs> My hope is that we can develop habits of paying attention and listening to each other. If we can do this, we can learn to live generously. For me, Living generously doesn't just mean setting aside time to do things for other people. It means allowing generosity to enter our moment-to-moment -moment lives. If we practice spontaneous acts of generosity as we go about our days, we can make generosity itself a mode of living. But I challenge all of us to go further. For if we are to truly live generously, we cannot be generous with our time and our energy alone. We must be generous with our minds and our hearts. This means accepting people for who they are. Somehow along the way, we've learned to judge people by the town they grew up, they grew up in, by the style of their hair, by the shape of their body. Just as there will always be things in our lives, such as our jobs. They're gonna pull our attention away. There are always gonna be forces in our community and in our society that are gonna pull us away from seeing who someone is. And I'm asking us to resist that. I'm asking us to practice small acts of generosity in our day-to-day -day lives. If we do this, we can teach each other to be more perceptive and more empathetic. We can build a better campus and better communities. And who knows where we can go from there. Every moment has potential. It might not lead to something, it might not be what we expect, but by reaching out to others, we can find rewards. We have so much to learn from each other and so much to give. Thank you.